again tonight. It's good to be on the program with you. We're thankful that we have this opportunity to share this time, and thank you for helping us to do so. Tonight, what I want to talk about is I want to talk about the criminals. Uh, that would be the title of tonight's program, The Criminals. The criminals that has actually taken over our government and taken over our nation, proven criminals. The Bible tells us once again, as I've quoted the passage of Scripture many times, that when the wicked bear rule, now, that's what some people would refer to as politics. When the wicked bear rule, the righteous shall mourn. When the righteous bear rule, the people shall rejoice. America has been in the decline, has been in decline for many, many years now. Once the most powerful nation the world had ever known. Number one in economics, number one in power, number one in, in uh uh, morality, by all means. Our streets were safer than any place you could go in the world. Uh, we were number one in education. Now, America is nothing. And it's taken place because criminals took advantage of an emotional situation, and that was the civil rights movement. Where there was wrongs that was done in the days of those civil rights movements and things that needed to be corrected without question, the entire system of the United States of America did not need changing. But when the criminals got their hands on the power, then of course they would use the emotional issue of the civil rights movement to pass and to do, to denigrate, to lowerate, and to slander anyone and anybody who did not agree with every detail of everything that they wanted to do to, as the president uh, said, to fundamentally change the United States of America. Now, common sense bears witness of itself. And number one, if you've got the greatest economy in the world, you have to be doing something right. If you have the greatest military in the world, you have to be doing something right and you're protected. If you have the greatest educational system in the world, you have to be doing something right. If you're top of the line all the way across the board, but there's civil rights issues that needs to be tended to. Then you tend to those civil rights issues and you make them right and you keep the system that has made us number one in everything in place. You don't destroy, destroy the system that made you number one in order to correct another problem. That is what has happened in America. Now, criminals is in charge and we know this now and I've known it because it's obvious and plain. But now the proof is there that what calls itself a Democratic Party, and I'm not pushing Republicans, I'm simply saying what is fact. The people that calls themselves the Democratic Party has now been proven beyond any shadow of a doubt to be criminals. You actually have the mob, worse than the mob. You have a mafia type organization running this country, and it's running it into the ground. We now see through the emails and through all of the other things that's come forward that these are bona fide felon criminals, felony charges running across the board. And those who don't have felony charges on them or felony charges in their past has committed felonies right before our very face. Again, now confirmed by emails, confirmed by videos, confirmed by Senate hearings, and on and on it goes. These are criminals, and we're going to look at it, and we're going to look at, well, where their playbook comes from, from the devil himself. We will be able to see biblically exactly what is being done now, being done during the days of Paul, and even long before that. Because you see, the devil does what the devil does. And envy and an envious spirit, present day, those that crave power, which are those of the Democratic Party. Envy moved the people of the Bible that were referred to biblically as the seed of Satan or as the devil's children. It was always because envy was connected to them. Their crimes was always envy. The Bible says where there is envy and strife, there's every evil work. It means that there is nothing that will not be done. If one is envious of power and wants power 
If one is envious of anything, once envy comes in, strife comes in, then they sow confusion and there's every evil work is what the Bible says. There's nothing that they won't do. Absolutely nothing that they won't do. These are criminals. We're two days now away from the election of a new president. God only knows what's going to happen up to those two days and even beyond those two days to January the 17th to where the next president is actually sworn in. There's a lot of possibilities. If Hillary Clinton fails to become the president, then there's a likelihood that her and her husband may very well skip town, that is, leave this nation. Because if Mr. Trump brings in an uncorrupt, an unpolluted Justice Department that goes after these felons, convicting them will be no problem whatsoever. And I promise you Hillary Clinton will not spend the rest of her life or 10 years in jail. They will leave the country because they are criminals guilty of criminal acts. If not, Miss Clinton will commit suicide. I believe that with all of my heart. She's not going to go to jail one way or the other. We are living in a very trying time now to where the Justice Department, the Justice Department of the United States has thoroughly corrupt itself under Barack Obama as Barack Obama has put in the places of justices those that want the same thing he wants, and that's the destruction of America. All the way back to Eric Holder, his first attorney general. These are people who took a man who stood in front of a polling precinct, screaming at the top of his lungs in military attire and a club in his hand, hollering, get ready to serve the black man. He is also on tape on video, saying and screaming through a bullhorn that we need to kill white people's babies. You want freedom? You're going to have to kill some crackers. You're going to have to kill some of their babies. This man, standing in front of a polling precinct in army apparel and a club in his hand, was let go by Mr. Obama and his Justice Department, saying that there was not enough evidence to use against him to say that he intimidated people. You want freedom? You're going to have to kill some crackers. You're going to have to kill some of their babies. If that doesn't speak for itself, you're deaf, dumb, and blind, and there's no need to try to talk to you. The Justice Department now, we have seen through the emails, is involved in Miss Clinton's corruption. Mr. Obama said he knew nothing of it when he was questioned about her server. Did you know about Hillary Clinton use of private email server? No. While she was Secretary of State? No. Mr. Obama said he learned of it at the same time we did by the media, of which I did a program a year ago when he said that, and said that's absolutely impossible. For him to expect me to believe that the President of the United States that has access to the CIA, the FBI, and every investigative office in the world gets his news from the same place I get mine, from CNN or Fox News, is absolutely ridiculous. Well, now the emails that's come out now shows that Mr. Obama was contacting Ms. Clinton through that illegal server. Now, I would imagine if Ms. Clinton does not win the election and a new Justice Department is set in, that the emails by the hundreds of thousands that's coming out now will shift toward Mr. Obama. And I think that the treason of which the man has been guilty of, in my view, will then become plainly manifested. I think the emails now that's being sent out centers around Hillary Clinton because of the presidential can, uh, race. Once that's over, if she does not win, she leaves town, commits suicide, and then they shift the emails and the documentation to Barack Obama, who was involved in it with her. That's already been proven. 
And I think then we begin to see what I believe to be the treasonous activity that Mr. Obama has engaged in. Nonetheless, the last time that there was a systemic injustice that is ruling from the top down, from the presidency all the way through the Supreme Court, the Justice Department, and the federal judges sat on benches. The last time that this was done, well, it was done again by Democrats, who has done the same thing from beginning to end. They are the same people. Now, I'm going to show you tonight the criminals. We start with Donna Brazil, this wonderful, soft-spoken woman who heads up the DNC, who has now been fired by CNN because she was delivering the questions of the presidential race and debate. She was delivering the questions to Hillary Clinton and Hillary Clinton accepting the questions. In other words, cheating. But my mother taught me always that a person that will lie to you will cheat you and a person that will cheat you will lie on you. She received the questions. Miss Brazil being questioned, well, falls back on persecution and that she's a Christian woman and she shoots straight and she don't tell lies and she don't know anything about it. And then more emails came out that proved it. The exact question she gave Hillary Clinton that exact question, line by line, was asked that night in the debate. Now, Miss Brazil has been fired by CNN. That's called saving your own neck to think that CNN didn't know. Well, that would be a bit foolish too. But none, nonetheless, the heads of the DNC keeps getting fired for criminal activity Donna Brazil, Debbie, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, all these emails showing all of these people who are supposed to be for the uh, underprivileged and for the minorities, all these emails showing them them making very racist statements. Fact of the business is, the head, the head donor of the Democratic Party, just two days ago, was caught on an open open mic saying that blacks has something blanking wrong with their heads. We've told you this for years. And now it is being proven. Here's Miss Brazil lying. And instead of just saying I'm an honest woman and lying with that, she has to fall back on the persecution thing. And I'm a Christian woman. She has to invoke Christ in her damnable lies. Criminals, corruption at the highest level. How did you get that question, Donna? Well, Kelly, since I play straight up and I'll play straight up with you, uh, I did not receive any questions from CNN. Let's just be Where'd very you get clear. It? Uh, where, where did you get uh, it? First of all, what information are you providing to me that, that will allow me to see what, what you're talking about? Everybody You got the is, WikiLeaks released a March 12th Podesta email showing I you do. messaging the Clinton campaign with the exact wording of a question asked at the March 13th Kelly, CNN TV Kelly, One town hall debate. Kelly, Where did you get uh, it? I, 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 you know, as a Christian woman, I understand persecution, but I will not sit here and be persecuted because your information is totally false. Okay, and now we find out that this unsavory criminal bunch, this baser sort, as the Bible puts it, and I'll read the scripture in just a few minutes. We find out that the Democratic Party, all the way up to Miss Clinton, has been involved and was involved in all of the riots. The riots in Chicago, they are the ones that created it with their henchmen on the ground. They are the ones that stopped Donald Trump's rally. They are the ones that caused the conflict and the people that got hurt was paid for by the Democratic Party. And that too has been caught on an open mic and an open video of a Mr. Kramer telling how they done it 
and how they were operatives of the Democratic Party. Then come to find out this same man has been to the White House 343 times and seen personally Barack Obama more than 40 times. These are an unsavory, baser sort of lewd people that are criminals. Make no mistake about it. Okay, now, let's go to Harry Reid. Again, these are the leaders of the party. You just saw Donna Brazile, plain little lie, caught in a lie. Now, Harry Reid, the leader of the Democratic Party and a senator, came out against Mitt Romney and made a speech on the Senate floor saying Mitt Romney had never paid taxes when he had no evidence of that and knew he couldn't prove it and knew it was a lie. When Mr. Reed was questioned about it after it was over with, was he ashamed of his lie? Was he sorry that he told his lies? Oh, no. Did he even try to hide that he lied? With a childlike smirk on his face, he simply said, well, he didn't win, did he? Let him prove that he has paid taxes, because he hasn't. No, I don't regret that at all. The Koch brothers, no one would help me. They were afraid the Koch brothers would go after them. So I did it on my own. So no regrets about Mitt Romney, about the Koch brothers. Some people have even call, called it McCarthyite. Well, they call it whatever they want. Um, Romney didn't win, did he? Well, they call it whatever they want. Um, Romney didn't win, did he? Then, of course, there's the Mr. Gruber, the man of which Barack Obama placed over the Obamacare lie, of which Mr. Obama lied 27 times, making a promise. And then when the promise proved to be wrong, came back and said that he said something that he never said. I've played all of that for you many, many times on the program. It does not matter that 27 times you have video of these people saying what they said. Then they have no trouble whatsoever looking into a camera, smiling, and saying, that's not what I said. And you play it for them 27 times. And they say, that's not what I said. And the problem is, truly, the idiots that watch them, that still believe them. Mr. Gruber the one Obama placed over Obamacare, said he wrote the bill in such a tortured manner that the Congress would not be able to read it and understand what the law really was, deceiving the American people, and that is a crime. Then he admits to it with this look of wonderful accomplishments and satisfaction upon his face of how he was able to dupe the Congress and the American people by torturing a bill so bad in its writing that no one could understand it. And look at the joyful pleasure on his face. This bill was written in a tortured way to make sure CBO did not score the mandate as taxes. If CBO scored the mandate as taxes, the bill dies. Okay, so it's written to do that. In terms of, in terms of risk rated subsidies, if you had a law which said healthy people are gonna pay in it made explicit the healthy people pay and the sick people get money. It would not have passed. Okay, just like the people, transparent lack of transparency is a huge political advantage, and basically, you know, call it the stupidity of the American voter or whatever. But basically, that was really, really critical to getting the thing to pass. And you know, it's the second best argument. Look, I wish Mark was right. We can make it all transparent. But I'd rather have this law than not. So it's kind of like his reporter story. You know, yeah, there's things I wish I could change, but I'd rather have this law than not. And then this past week, Miss Clinton was campaigning in Florida on the stage with the Florida Congressman Al C. Hastings, the Congressman Al C. Hastings. It struck me to see two felons, one running for the presidency of the United States of America, her a felon because she's committed felony crimes, on camera, a felon. And Al C. Hastings, who was a federal judge and another leader of the Democratic Party, was a federal judge who got impeached by the Congress 
for taking bribes from the mafia. And there ain't no rules around here. We're trying to accomplish something. And therefore, when the deal goes down, uh, all of this talk about uh, rules, we make them up as we go along. Then Mr. Hastings, who got impeached for taking bribes from the mafia by the Congress, <laughs> became a member of the body that impeached him. You can't make this stuff up as they say. These are bona fide criminals, my friend. One after the other. Bona fide criminals. And the Bible says that whenever the wicked bear rule, the people shall mourn. And that is exactly what has happened to this country. These wicked criminals have ruled. But again, I tell you that the problem is the American people. Because with any discernment, with the gift of the Spirit of the Lord working in any of us, we could have seen this coming from miles away. We heard George Bush, Daddy Bush, in the early 90s, actually issuing in the New World Order. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a New World Order, a world where the rule of law not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. And the trouble that we're about to face has everything to do with that. A recent article came out not long ago that said America is the only nation that is stopping the world order from coming to be. That is what the Third World War will be used for. We can accept Clinton and let Clinton destroy the borders and go ahead and surrender us to world slavery, which is the Antichrist order, world government, which she's already said that she wants to do. Or we can have Mr. Trump in office, and at least we'll have the right to fight for our country. Who knows what may happen then? One thing's crystal clear. Russia's preparing for war. China's preparing for war. And the Bible says it's going to happen. The Bible says in the book of Ezekiel chapter 38 as it speaks of Russia coming down into the Middle East. And then before they attack Israel, it says an evil thought shall come into their mind and they shall go up. Up would be through Alaska into the nation of unwalled villages where the people dwell safely, or at least think they do. Unwalled villages, that's this nation with its open borders right now. Exactly what the Bible said. So after the presidential race is over, you need to stay tuned because this party is just starting, I promise you. Now, now, finally, I wanted to end with a scripture that I had for the night to show you that the same spirit works now that worked then and will always be. The devil is the devil, and the devil does what the devil does. Paul and some of his companions was going to preach, going to tell the story of Christ. That being a threat to the power of the scribes and the Pharisees, the religious leaders in that day, the Bible says this in Acts 17, verse 5. But the Jews, which believed not, moved with envy, took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort, and gathered a company and set all the city on an uproar, and assaulted the house of Jason, and sought to bring them out unto the people. The word baser baser sort, means people of lowness, vulgar people, lewd fellows. The word lewd means hurtful, evil, degenerate. This is exactly what has been proven that the Democratic Party did in Chicago and these uprisings across the nation. It has now been proven by video and by emails 
that they are the ones that instigated it. Though we always knew they did. That was a guaranteed fact. But now there's proof. Ferguson, the people who destroyed Ferguson and burned the cities down because a dope head who had just robbed a store tried to take a gun away from a policeman and shoot the policeman, got shot himself in the presence of eyewitnesses. The people who burned the workplaces of Ferguson down, 70% of them that was arrested was not even from Ferguson. They were the baser sort, the lewd fellows, of which was organized not by the Jews that believed not as it was in Paul's day, but from the Democratic Party, as is now proved. In Milwaukee, the people that was arrested for burning and looting and destroying that city, again, 70% of them was not even from Milwaukee. These are hired guns of an evil, hurtful, degenerate bunch. They are what was organized by the street organizers. Mr. Obama, one of them. It has now been proven. This nation has been turned over to a mob. Evil degenerates. Wicked criminals. And that's not an overstatement. We got two days to at least right this ship and say to the world, no matter what the outcome of it will be, that this nation is not going to be run by criminals anymore. Do what you're supposed to do. Take a load off of you Just put it on my back and down I carry it too You look like you could use a day or two but Get yourself some rest now And while you do I'll carry that load for you All of these troubles and I chose alone 